dystopian times. On this week's weekly dose of stupidity, folks, I have really unfortunate news. White Boy Summer is canceled. In a world of politics dominated by the strange, the deranged, and outright insane, we'll now take a moment to shine a light on the craziest of what politics has to offer. This is your weekly dose of stupidity. Well, this week, folks, shut up, chat. We have some medical advice from the son of Tom Hanks. He's going to encourage everyone to get vaccinated, but there's going to be a little bit of a plot twist. So uh, let's go ahead and and watch. Hey, guys. So um, just checking in. Look, I've been kind of on the fence about this for a while. That's why I've never spoke on it. But with the amount of people that I know recently that, that have gotten COVID and with like the numbers rising, I think it's important for me to say, like, I got the vaccine. I think everybody should. I think it's really important like that we all do this just as like Now if we pause it right here. This is a wonderful video, is it not? It was so like far, if we so good. <laughs> if we if we pretend as if he stops talking right here, uh, I have no issue with this, but this is going to uh, veer sharply in a, a very different direction. Citizens as Americans, we have to look out for each other and get this shit under control, guys. So like I suggest to all my followers, you guys make set an appointment and get the vaccine first thing. Psych, bitch. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I never had COVID. You ain't sticking me with that motherfucking needle. It's the motherfucking flu. Get over it, okay? If you're sick, stay inside. I'm tired of having, okay? Why are we working around y'all? If y'all, uh, if you're in danger, stay your ass inside. I'm tired of wearing a motherfucking mask. The worst part is that you know that he's recording this thinking that he's killing it. But when I watch this, it makes me want to, like, find the highest cliff and just, like, yeet myself off of it in Roblox, of course. Uh, folks, how do we deal like with these to, people? Well, I just want to remind everybody out there that uh, Chet Hanks has a cameo that you can purchase for one ninety nine. So if you'd like to hear him <laughs> say anything else, perhaps something in Patois or have him sing uh. his song. You can order that on Cameo right now uh, for one ninety nine. Same price as Giuliani, isn't it? <laughs> is it Wait, Giuliani's on Cameo. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, Giuliani's wow. gone further and further lower. Oh um, my god! Wow. I mean, I think there's the obligatory thing to say that obviously there are people who haven't gotten vaccinated for fairly legitimate reasons. We have a healthcare system that is built to exclude people, to leave people out, to not give people information about how they can get health care, where they can get health care. There are a lot of people who think they need health insurance to get the shot, even mm -hmm. though that's not the case. Um, also, children can't get it. But I, I'm kind of a little tired of this notion that we have to, like, you know, be easy on these anti-vaxxers or use persuasion. Um, it's clear that that's not what's driving these people, especially, and when I see someone like Chet Hanks, it makes me want to personally sign up for like, a, you know, a, a, a vaccine, a government vaccine brigade of teams that hold <laughs> people down and, you know, insert needles into people. One day. Um, One day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, well, you need a team of a few guys. There's going to be resistance when, when you're trying to hold someone down and stick a needle in them. Um, Chet, this is kind of a big dude. I don't know if I can do it personally. I might need a team. But like a lot of these people, like they know the facts. They know what the situation is. And they're the same type of people who've always, through their politics, acted selfishly and are now coming on this position where they can be the most selfish person possible because it suits them. And now they're anti-vaxxers. And yeah, I don't have much patience for them. I think we got to have some sort of I, I know vaccine mandates are a little bit tricky in how they can be implemented, but I, th I think, you know, we can bar people from flying, bar people from certain restaurants. And I don't think businesses are really taking the lead on this, as we're seeing. Um, I did not lie, by the way. Price price was accurate. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred. I'm pretty much at mandatory vaccines. I'm pretty much there. Apparently, two thirds of Americans are on board with that idea anyway. So, in a democratic sense, right. it would actually hold a super majority opinion. I don't know. I think that at this point, choosing not to get the vaccine is a violation of the bodily autonomy of other people. Um, you're essentially allowing like an interminable plague. We don't have. Wait, there's a beeping behind somebody's. Does anyone else hear that? Uh, beep, beep. I hear I it hear too. It. It's not me. Yeah, beep beep. 
beep beep. Yeah, no, I hear you. It's very, uh, very distracting. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm not sure. Uh, somebody has a beep beep. That's okay. Uh, I don't have a beep beep. Um, anyway, yeah, we don't have many like ethical analogs to this because usually when we're talking about bodily autonomy, we're only referring to things done to the individual itself. But because of the way the COVID spreads and new um, and new variants of it form, which could potentially supersede the effectiveness of existing vaccines. This is kind of a everyone needs to get in the boat situation. Um, we're getting a little bit past the these worn out, like, uh, let me do what I want, sort of pseudo libertarian arguments from, by the way, a man who I don't know this, but I'm almost positive this is the case, probably is a pro, pro Blue Lives Matter anti BLM. So the libertarianism, mm. I'm guessing, probably very selective. Uh, on his part and a lot of the it other vaxxers. Is. Yeah, it uh, yeah, it is. always is with these people. And libertarians all, are never libertarians. It's the conspiracism <laughs> thing. And we've been dealing with this for a while. But right now we have a um, uh, an entire political party and uh, the media empire that aligns with them that are facilitating and nurturing this conspiracism about as much as you reasonably can. So we're going to have to find a way to deal with that sometime, too. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm kind of on board with the mandatory vaccines at a minimum. Vaccine passports should not be controversial. But this is what we're dealing with. I just want to give people a sense of the petulance that we're dealing with. So a sociologist from Dartmouth College says that vax resistors could be tricked into getting the shot if they think it would make liberals mad. Um, this is where we're at, folks. This is where you, like, you have to convince them to take a shot to save their lives, <laughs> to own the libs. <laughs> How do you how do you deal with this? Literal I mean, baby brain, literal <laughs> infant brain. Like, yeah, I, I just had I had a great idea. Don't be a cuck. Get stuck. There you go. That's the big thing. We gotta come up with that. Yeah, the, we gotta make it seem like if you don't get your vaccine, it's because you're afraid oh, of tiny germs, and that means that you're a cuck. That's how we just do say, it. That's how we just do say it. the vaccine that. side effect is that it inoculates you against the increases of estrogen and soy that's being put in American food. <laughs> And they'll take it like that. True. They'll be like, finally, I was getting worried. Take that well, right and also on to that note, um, COVID-19 has affected some men when it comes to erectile dysfunction as well. So if you don't want your dick to break, then vaccinate yourself so you don't get COVID. Um, and, and another thing. So this is what I've been doing. So I really hold back a lot because I just want to scream at anti-vaxxers. Um, and there's thankfully no one left in my family who I believe is anti-vax. So now I'm moving on to the rest of the people in society. Uh, gotta but catch them all. Gotta catch them all. 100%, baby. Um, so this is what I try to share, right? Because this, these are the stories that I think are going to move people that are still movable. So unvax COVID patient posts videos from ICU begging people to get the shot. How many times have we seen this same story with, you know, right wing radio hosts dying saying they're going to be, you know, if they survive... They'll be the biggest pro-vax people in the world. I'm not sure if the video is going to play. It wasn't playing earlier, but I just want to play a little bit of this. Um, okay, yeah, it's not working. But, um, you know, I think that as much as we can use whatever tactics possible, I think we should go for it. Scaring people, uh, making life very, very uncomfortable if you are not vaccinated so you can't go to the store. Because I'm sorry, like, like as Sam was saying, if you're under 12, you're not eligible to get the vaccine yet. So, you know, this is no longer just the personal choice, as, as Vosh was alluding to as well. You know, you are endangering other people actively so. And your freedom ends where your, you know, your neighbor's fist uh, or nose begins. I just fucked up that statement, but you all know the spirit of what yeah, I was we, talking we, about. We, we, Fill in the blanks. We get the gist, yeah. Yeah, there's so much about this. God, like I, I have spent so much time covering and thinking about COVID over the last like year. And it's like, yeah, uh, it's so tough because like on 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 one hand, like I do agree that like the scaring route seems to work pretty well. Like I just had a, rel a conversation with a relative the other day, which we haven't talked and we haven't spoken in a while because we had a big falling out about anti-vax stuff. Like this is literally one of my you know, family members I still talk to and, and they got into this anti-vax, anti-masking thing. And then their friend almost died. And, uh, and the, 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 their friend dying, who was a mutual, like a friend of our family. Like I know this person, like they almost, they're just, they're disabled now. They have long COVID like, and seeing that made them uh, change, you know, made my family member change their position on it, which like that's the unfortunate reality of like all of this is like a lot of times it is that that takes it. I don't know about like how I feel about things like max, like, like uh, vaccine mandates. 
um, not because of any sort of like personal like freedom argument or anything like that, but because I worry what the what that's going to mean for the from the government's perspective. Something that has really frustrated me about our government's COVID response has basically been that all of the policy has been made not around keeping people well and people not dying. I mean, we have six hundred and fifty thousand dead now, somewhere in that ballpark, um, which is a lot of Americans dead. Um, but it's always been about, well, how do we get how do we do the thing that gets people back to work? And so my fear is that you end up with a uh, a a bold path forward of mandating vaccines and also then everybody get, goes back to work and you end all the benefits. So everybody has to get the vaccine and you use working and and finances and means testing to push the economy back open and therefore force everybody in under the name of of ultimately like, hey, yeah, you're getting vaccinated. But we're at a point where that's not just the vaccine isn't just the issue. The Delta variant is already here. A lot of new cases are Delta variant. We're most likely, it is just simply true, we are probably going to get another variant. If they pass a, va a vaccine mandate, and it is like I sort of theorize it will be, where it's this, it's a vaccine mandate to push people into going and getting uh, getting back into work and whatever. Um, I worry that that would be, that that's just going to lead us to a position where uh we naively recreate the exact circumstances that led to where we are right now by pushing people back into their workplaces, back into their, uh, you know, into their restaurants and their Best Buys and their everything like that. And then we just get another variant and we do it all over again. I think that's like a horror situation. So I don't know. I don't know if a, ma if a vaccine mandate is like the answer, but uh, we there's got to be there, like I I, I, I honestly, like, I find the COVID, the COVID at this point to be such a hard uphill battle that I, I, uh, it is one of the topics that I find hard. Like, I think that like a lot of what I focus on is like, how do we alleviate it? Like in the lives of the people around me, because the policy level is just chaos right now. It's so chaotic. Yeah. It's, it, it's one of the issues for me that's really driving my doomerism, at least like personally speaking, because it kind of feels like we're just going to be in this perpetual state of, uh, of plague because there's so many people who are willingly choosing to not take the vaccine. So I'll go back to like what Lance said about like using everything, a variety of tactics. I think we should definitely do that when it comes to vaccines. I don't know the extent I, to which I answer this one. Specifically, oh yeah. I, I, I do. I do. I have two examples that I could give all y'all and they both happen to involve the French, so prepare yourselves. But oh, okay. uh, in the case of both uh, Macron in France and in Quebec as well, what they did is they started implementing vaccine passport systems, whereas you would be required to use a passport to be able to get into things, such as say a nice good old sweaty nightclub to get your sweat on. If that was the case, all of a sudden you saw in both areas, both in Quebec and in France, the amount of people getting vaccinated starts to surge. So I don't mm. think it's like, you know, you'll have the anti-vaxxers who will try to say outrageous and outlandish things like this is apartheid, blah, 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 even though it's a free vaccine that everyone has access to. I think you have to be sensitive to the fact that there are going to be certain demographics within every society uh, that may not want to take uh you know medicines directly from the government for historical reasons right like black americans for example would have that so would indigenous canadians they would have the exact same reasons so you can start outreach programs to help them but you would find in the places where they've done this if you implement some sort of a uh, a system where yeah you don't have the right to go into a crowded area and cough on people and give people disease and sweat on people that's not that's not freedom that's not your god-given right you know so uh we do have uh, a passport system the vaccine is free you can access it at any time boom number goes up 